For about 50 years now, NASA has not sent astronauts to the moon's surface. However, in May of the previous year, NASA announced that it had selected 11 aerospace companies to study and produce prototypes for a human landing system. This decision came in the bid to successfully launch astronauts for NASA's Artemis mission, intended for 2024. At the end of the day, NASA only contracted three commercial spaceflight companies, including SpaceX, Blue Origin, and Dynetics. Working to develop a spacecraft that will enable astronauts to build a permanent base on the lunar surface, SpaceX was awarded a $135 million contract by NASA to further develop a lunar-optimized variant of the Starship spacecraft it intends to send to Mars. In this video, we'll take you through the SpaceX human landing system revealed, prototype, and other steps that have been taken by this aerospace company. Stay until the end of the video so you don't miss out on any of the crazy details, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more. Now, let's begin. Recently, pictures of a SpaceX Starship prototype surfaced on the internet. This white-colored Starship prototype features NASA's antique logo alongside a United States flag. SpaceX is currently working on a modified version of their commercial vehicle, Starship, as a human landing system for missions to the lunar surface in the coming years. As we all know, that SpaceX is the face of sustainability. The prototype for the moon landing generally seems to shuffle the air with a little bit of confusion. Because it actually shows no heat shield for atmospheric re-entry, and this leaves the question of whether the SpaceX Starship will be able to return to Earth at all. This human landing system, according to SpaceX however, will be a fully reusable system, which is capable of integrating with the Lunar Gateway as well as the Orion spacecraft. As a matter of fact, while it is still in development, I should add that the SpaceX Lunar Optimized Starship does not feature any aerodynamic fin to control descent for Earth landing. As there are growing questions in your mind about why the Starship was built in this confusing manner, I should add that unlike other contracted human landing systems, the Starship is built for landing humans as well as cargo, reaching about 100 metric tons of cargo. In contrast, the other two contracted human landing systems might just be able to transport about 5 to 10 tons of payload. To apparently support their intentional design, SpaceX said its Starship for the Artemis moon landing can fly a lot times between the moon's surface and lunar orbit without flaps or heat shielding required for Earth's return. With a large habitable and storage volume, the Starship is capable of delivering significant amounts of cargo for research and support robust operations on the lunar surface to enable a sustainable moon base. I'm sure we can go on to conclude that SpaceX is not just building a human landing system, but also building a sustainable human landing system that could go on to serve as a long-term base for astronauts and researchers on the moon's surface. Last year, the SpaceX chief engineer Elon Musk explained how the lunar-optimized Starship would need to undergo modifications to successfully land on the moon. He mentioned that the company will work on the new legs, which will give space for a larger stance as well as aid automatic leveling to make it easier to lean into the wind and land on the rocky and pitted moon surface. However, Elon Musk described the legs as one of the hardest problems. And once the legs are mounted externally, they will definitely need shielding which will add more mass to the Starship. In truth, other landing solutions will add mass, but Elon Musk has specifically mentioned that no other option will do the trick than better legs. The forward thrusters will help further stabilize the ship when landing in high winds. He concluded that there isn't actually any need to bring the first ships back to Earth because they can serve as a mini moon base. The SpaceX prototype designed for the moon, however confusing, will be able to deliver maximum payload to the moon without flaps or even big gas thruster packs. As a single stage solution, prototype Starship will be lifted and thrusted into space by the super heavy booster, and the Starship would further accelerate on its own into orbital velocity with its vacuum Raptor engines. If you've been following the test flights, SpaceX has been using their sea level Raptor engines because they have been testing flights without payload, therefore erasing the need for the super heavy booster. While the sea level Raptor engines have been captured at the base of the prototype Starship, they might never be used to land on Earth. This is because the Starship has been developed for single travel to the moon's surface, and these Raptor engines are there to assist its landing on any surface. While the news of creating a sustainable habitat sounds pleasing, you should not forget that another block to Starship reaching the lunar surface is refueling. Standing at 394 feet, the Starship will journey to the moon for up to 6 to 7 days, and while they might fill it up with the required fuel to begin the journey, I believe there will be reason to refuel for a successful landing. As a matter of fact, NASA already awards SpaceX some $53.2 million contract just to demonstrate how the Starship will be refueled in space. Under the contract, SpaceX will demonstrate a large-scale flight to NASA, where it will transfer 10 metric tons of cryogenic propellant, which is specifically liquid oxygen. 
between two Starship tanks. The idea is to actually launch multiple Starships with some made only to top up others while in orbit. Economically speaking, Starship reusability as well as orbital refueling is critical to transporting a large number of crew members and cargo to the moon, and Mars when the time comes. Once the Starship in orbit has separated from its Super Heavy booster, two other Starship vehicles, one a tanker and the other a propellant storage vehicle, would launch to deliver the fresh propellant to the Starship human landing system, which would then propel itself and continue the journey towards the moon. With enough and extensive volume of space for the crew, the Starship also contains two airlocks, which will give the vehicle the capability to transport close to four suited astronauts for moonwalks. Furthermore, on the side of the Starship are two oblong-shaped apertures, in approximately two-thirds of their way up, from the main thrusters. While questions are being asked of the need of these apertures, more pictures have been revealed of these apertures emitting light, or perhaps thrust. While Musk has not specifically said anything about them, I have a hard time coming to believe that they're just there to assist the spacecraft when it needs to land on parts of the moon where sunlight isn't reaching. As a matter of fact, the expanded capabilities of the Starship provides NASA an impressive and improved flexibility, as well as a standard mission effectiveness for the 2024 landing mission and other missions. Proudly, test flights have reached about 500 meters into the air, and now SpaceX plans to teach close to 50,000 meters with its next test flight model. In late 2022, a NASA lunar lander bound for the moon's south pole will launch on a SpaceX rocket. Early in the previous year, NASA chose Mastern Space Systems to manage the delivery of about eight different payloads to the moon's pole, as a part of the agency's Artemis program. Mastern has in turn hired SpaceX to launch its XL-1 lunar lander for the delivery. As a matter of fact, SpaceX will be directly involved in launches of payloads to the lunar surface and this will in fact be the second installment of NASA's lunar delivery program, interestingly. The instruments will absolutely focus on tasks such as mapping the moon's composition and temperature, sampling nearby materials, and photographing the lunar geology as research. Another little bit of information is that the lander will also carry a small rover, which will search for signs of water on the moon. Wow. Do you think water is still on the moon? Let us know your answer in the comments section below. While NASA has not yet officially picked its wanted human landing system, which it will in the coming months, it is safe to say that amongst others, the SpaceX human landing system might be the most feasible. Although the agency clearly outlined that the SpaceX human landing system might be risky, it is however not in any doubt that a lot of contributing factors, including economic relevance, sustainability, and reusability, will be much considered. The Starship, in all its specifications, among the other two contracted, is the only one that can go on multiple journeys between the lunar surface and the lunar orbit without ever destroying any of its parts. This reusability, in fact, puts SpaceX ahead. Although to be fair, a source selection statement from NASA last year outlined that SpaceX had the weakest ejectable rating out of the three selected companies. The technical and managerial ratings were dubbed acceptable while the other two companies, Blue Origin and Dynetics, were tagged acceptable and very good. In fact, the capabilities of the SpaceX Starship were tagged to meet or exceed all of NASA's threshold values for functional and performance requirements. The design actually supports NASA's long-term lunar explorational plans, as the agency emphasizes on sustainability and much longer stays on the lunar surface. The Starship has immediately incorporated sustainable capabilities and the SpaceX proposal actually provides substantial mission design flexibility, alongside reducing the time and cost associated with changing into sustainable phase mission operations. Still in development though, the SpaceX human landing system will undergo early and numerous ground and test flight system demonstrations to reduce technical risks and also meet up with the scheduled date for final flight. The test program will go from a flight of Starship into low orbit and then an uncrewed lunar landing in 2022. Thank you for watching one of our videos. While you're here, go ahead and click on one of these two videos on your screen. See you there!